everyone, it's Danny B here. And again, trains are gonna be controlled by AI. But until then, we're gonna keep enjoying AI through AI image creation. In the last video, which I appreciate a lot of you guys tuning into this channel for the very first time, this channel is still really new and it showed me that you guys really enjoyed that type of content. So if you are new here, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel so you never miss another one here. But with that being said, we're gonna get into this again and we're gonna be inputting a prompt in here in order to create the next build for this layout. So again, we're not having AI build this route, but rather AI is going to be inspiring the build. So I'm gonna be inputting something into the prompt for AI and it's gonna be generating an image for me to select from to use as inspiration for the next leg of this build. So with that being said, Let's head on over into AI image creation. All right, so in the last build, we had it do a modern, realistic freight train passing through a mountainous area between Kentucky and Georgia, and we was able to come up with the route we saw in episode one. So we're gonna be going kind of on that same note. There was a river there involved. So let's do modern, realistic photo of a freight train passing along a rural community in a mountainous area along a river somewhere between Kentucky and Georgia. George, Georgia, if I can spell. And we'll see what that comes up with. All right, so we got some interesting images here and it looks like we might be going from a double main line to a single main line in this one. Uh, this is interesting here. We have, a, we have a bunch of houses along a river with seemingly no possible road. I guess this, is, this looks like more like a bike trail that gets them to their houses somehow. Uh, but then we have houses on the other side of the track with a road over here, single main line. There's the river. We have houses on this side, more mountains. This mountain has a rocky cliff on it. Um, quite a few pine trees. This started looking like it went into Canada real fast. And this next one has trains for miles. Oh my gosh, what is happening here? So here's our double main but it comes off of a huge bridge that comes out of the jungle forest mountains over here into a little town with barns and some houses and businesses. Then over here, we have more tracks that go over here in the mountains with a country road, a little bridge. I just don't see how I could possibly do that one, but I'll consider it. Okay, this one might seem more natural to the environment. This river actually has some shallows. I noticed that. You can see about the ripples there. Um, trees really populated along there. This becomes a, a single main. Um, I have a road over here with some houses and some houses over here. So at some point, the river has a bridge that connects the two communities. But it also goes over the railroad here at the same time and dips down uh, kind of on, you know, below the embankment. So this one seems possible. I'd have to imagine it. This is basically what continues along and maybe back here in this valley is kind of where we just were. This one's, this one's not impossible. This one's definitely doable, I would say. And then this is also another one, but it has these ridiculously tall rocky cliff mountains here. Looks like, is that another track going through the street here, it looks like? Some houses here, tracks, river. Yeah, I could probably do that. But in the end, I can only choose one. So for this one, I think it's pretty clear which one I have to go with. Option number three definitely seems the most doable. The one that's got some shallows, uh, two sides, two little communities across the river, and the mountains seem more like what we already have established. So we have our second image. This is what we're gonna be creating. So this is gonna be interesting. We're transitioning from a very uh, derelict 
nothing environment to now we have a rural community that we have to get built. So that being said, let's get into the build. Alrighty, y'all, we are back for episode number two. This one was certainly a much longer build than episode number one. All in all, all of the total video clips that you're seeing sped up here, this is actually being sped up uh, at 1200 speed. The last one I did was at 900, so it's going to go by a little bit faster. I apologize for that. If it wasn't for that, it'd be even longer. This, in total, had about... 19 hours of build time uh, now this was not all done at once this is several several weeks of effort just getting on the trains and a lot of times I'll just hit record and I'll pause recording if I need to go do something else and uh, but overall this is what we came up with now the AI shows a single track main going down the river so that tells me that we had a double track main, so we have to imagine there's a point where it meets together. But likewise, you see a road on each side of the river. So that also tells me at some point there is a road that comes through. In this case, we're making go under a railroad bridge. And so there is a road that goes down on the sides and it creates two new roads. So this is what we first established when we were getting in here and we also created the area where the tracks meet up likewise it's going to need some signals and some effort here and we're going through right now and we're just going through and getting the single track main created with the embankment and that's how we always start this off this one took a lot of effort i will not lie so so while i'm going through and finishing up the track here I'll uh, shut up for a little bit and just let the music kind of entertain you for a little bit while we go through and build and get this road all set up. So from this point, I decided to start using the yarn road assets. I used the four lane road over here where that dirt road connects to it. Uh, and then likewise, I'm connecting it to where it can go to some two lane roads, which needed some a lot of elevation changes and uh, things just to get things going. But uh, once I got this set up, this kind of helps set the pace for the rest of the build. Then it was time to go in and create our river. Now you do see in the AI image the river comes pretty close to the railroad so uh, not as much distance as compared to episode one from the river to the railroad. Um, but overall I think I was able to get this pretty well accurate. Next up, we had to go ahead and put the connecting road bridge over here because obviously if this has a road on both sides of the river, well that road is going to have to go over the river. So uh, we went ahead and set up our route and where that four lane goes and also went ahead and did some elevation because we have all these hills. You have to imagine it's not flat through the, through the earth here so it's probably going uphill a little bit. And then later on, we'll have to go in and connect that over to the hills we had from part one. Then likewise, you do it over on the other side. And that's helping us establish the area just a little bit. Next, once we had a basic pathway here, it was time to go ahead and get our elevation going for the railroad and kind of establish that as it comes into this scene where the bridge is. This took a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, uh, but overall I felt like we was able to get this area looking pretty darn nice in the end. Mm -hmm. 
And here's our good friends, the Narm Rocks. This is uh, how I decided to do this, because there was a little bit of a gap in the elevation and the embankment that we used for the railroad here. And overall, I feel like this is just a good way to kind of just break that up a little bit and establish a little bit more uniqueness to the earth in this scene. arm rocks going in on over on the other side as we try to uh, hide this a little bit to where it doesn't look like just such an awkward uh, embankment suddenly meeting the bridge there uh, I, I'm still not quite sure if I know the perfect abutments that I like best in this game so sometimes I find it's easier just to go with a bunch of rocks I mean this isn't something unusual either this this could be a realistic you know scenario where there's a bunch of rocks over by where the uh, railroad meets the bridge. And from there, once I felt like I had that section set up pretty well, it was time to go ahead and time to even things out. And we're going to go ahead and do the first part of connecting the scene one to scene two by kind of transitioning those mountains a little bit and kind of getting this elevation area set up a little bit. And uh, overall, I, I, think, I think I did this pretty well. Maybe some things could have been done a little bit differently. Um, but you can go through and smooth out everything real good and just get this road where it's going to transition nicely and then you can work on uh, connecting them out. Now it, it is difficult. I will tell you this, if you're kind of new to trains a little bit, um, connecting mountains to the flat ground can be difficult, uh, but it can be done. Just kind of do a little bit of elevation of time and then use the smooth tools to really work that out. Kind of like what I'm doing here with this hill here, you see? Uh, and then you can uh, and use the smooth tools again, the transitions, and make it all look nice here. As you can see, it takes a lot of different elevations to make this right and uh, just really got to be patient with it and uh, just really work that all in there good. Kind of get just, you know, some little flat shelves and then you can go in and smooth it all out and in the end it's going to look just exactly the way you're looking for it to look and make a nice little mountain slope going up through there. It's kind of funny when you think about it. It actually can use similar techniques in model railroading. Um, several people I've seen before, and I've, I've done it myself, use different size sheets of foam or stacking foam in order to make this same effect that I'm actually doing in trains right here, where you're creating several different elevations, and then in model railroading, you would then smooth it out using tools and stuff. Well, in this case, I guess we're using our own tools uh, in trains. Now this right here was what I did all in the first day. We're about to get uh, caught up into the next part of this, but creating this mountain right here took a lot of time and effort and uh, you know this is kind of just giving you a, a great idea as to what it takes to really transition this and uh, from that point you know I was able to kind of smooth it out 
and get it looking nice and like a like it like it never really broke up into another scene honestly like it really feels now like this keeps going from the first part of the episode that we did Up next, it was time to go down the railroad line and go ahead and get the set area set up for what's going to be coming down through here on the railroad side of the river. Uh, the railroad side of the river uh, area took quite a while. Really, both sides take quite a while to get done. Um, but this is the one where it's going to be most visible. So this is where I think majority of your best detail work needs to be done right over here. And then it's uh, also important to uh, smooth out the hill to the river because you know it's, you don't want it to be a, a steep bluff of drop-offs. You do want it to transition well into the river so that when you put the water down in there, it's all going to look nice. Uh, but overall, I, I think this was done pretty darn nice. Once we got the hill to the river pretty much established, it was a good idea here to go ahead and start smoothing out this whole area here. And this took a little bit of uh, thought and effort on my end to kind of make the road a little bit shorter than the embankment here. Uh, and then it's all going to be able to kind of transition itself. But this is going to be where, you know, you see a visible, uh, visible little town or more or less uh, suburb areas with some houses. But you, you can't imagine out of view you see some fog there in the ai picture out of view there has to be some kind of life so we are going to probably this is where we kind of get to be a little bit of creative and have some creative liberties here because you can't see everything that's out through there just like you can't see that uh that train bridge that goes over the road but you know there has to be something there uh to have made two roads on each side of the river so this is where playing with this yes this is ai inspired routes but uh you have to have some creative liberties because in the end this is still a route that you're building on trains and uh, you know you just have to have fun with it a little bit. And then from this point I decided to go ahead and break away from the road projects and get back to uh, kind of making that transition mountain. So we kind of worked on the road that's over on the left side of the train tracks, the side opposite of the tracks on the river, and we're going to work on bringing up that hill that goes up to the mountain from the other side. Uh, also, I realized I wasn't quite happy with the way the watercolor looks, so I made a little bit of a change to it, and uh, then we got back to work on that mountain.
again just like the other side i feel like this uh, technique has worked pretty nice in order to transition the mountain we had from scene one into scene two and then you'll use the uh, smooth techniques to kind of make it go to the road better and uh, i'm very happy with that it'll be really nice once the trees get on there uh, then we're going to work on getting the other side set up in order to put the road down through there and add life over to that side. Now, this side was interesting. We're going to definitely see more of this as we get into it later on. Um, while it doesn't come next to the tracks, it looks to me like there's a lot more depth in the neighborhood that is on that side of the river. It looks like there's actually a few streets that go back with a lot more housing development on that side. So that'll help play into it as we move along. But as we're where we're at right now, we're actually working on the bridge abutment for the other side. We did rocks for one side. I decided to use this abutment for the other side and work on it pretty well. I was doing some experiments with the bridges, but overall I didn't think these really worked or made sense. The bridges are short enough that I feel like they don't need middle support. Uh, but back to that abutment there, I couldn't quite get the line up correctly, so I had an idea. Let's put down these plant shrubs here, and we can use these to blend it in and hide this gap from the abutment to the embankment. And overall, I felt like this was the right call, and it looks really good in the end. Likewise, a few of these plant shrubs kind of going around the rocks areas proved to be a good way to help transition all this and using some grass tools here in order to help kind of hide all this. Now, I will say this, while in the previous episode I used a lot of single plant shrubs, I found out as we progress, and you're going to probably see this when it happens, that it makes more sense to do those in areas like this where you need to transition stuff, but overall, I actually did better using spline assets the jvc shrub and grass spline assets worked really well for me here and uh overall i think that's gonna play a lot into this build moving forward but anyways now we're back going down the railroad here this is uh, some narm rocks we're using to hide in here and uh, there will be some retaining walls also used it's not all gonna be rock here but this seems like we well we pretty much established at this point this is a very rocky area if you cut into the earth a little bit there's going to be some rock exposed and so we have tried to keep that a little bit but also trying to use some other thinking process in this as well especially like here you see the earth is really dipping down a little bit so here is you know good places to use these rock assets to hide that gap between the embankment and the earth itself Again, this is what I'm talking about. Just little things like this where some rocks. That's where I find it good to use those individual assets. But uh, for the most part, these spline assets do just the same as what I'm trying to accomplish here. You don't have to use those individuals, but I kind of like it.
Just another note here, if you guys are still watching at this point, I greatly do appreciate y'all for continuing to watch this series. Episode 1 uh, received quite a lot of good responses, and I'm really glad. I know we most recently had a video take off on this channel that was regarding a, uh, a train derailment in Nebraska. But uh, at the end of the day, I still love pr producing all kinds of rail fanning adventure videos, but also these trains build series. Um, this one in particular is one I'm having so much fun in. I'm using a lot more of the build uh, styles that I've learned over this last year in this series. But likewise, it is a phenomenal challenge. And really, there's so many great trains creators out there on YouTube. And I would encourage you all to give this a shot. Uh, you know, WIT Simulations, Nugget Trains, uh, heck, Approach Medium. I'd encourage all of y'all to, to give this a try. Let AI decide what you need to build. It's, it's been a lot of fun so far, and I'm, I'm having a great time doing this. So, uh, But likewise, I hope that you're having a good time and enjoying watching this video. I know it's long, but I do appreciate you all for taking time to watch it. If you want to see more content like this, please let me know down in the comments section. And also, if you're new, make sure you leave a like and subscribe uh, so that you can see episode three when that comes out. Likewise, uh, I've also now launched channel memberships on this channel if you want to support this series you can become a member uh we have just a basic you know channel membership but we're toying with the idea right now of setting up a membership status that hopefully sooner rather than later once these builds are done so like for example this one you're watching here when it's done hopefully i can release the route in each phase to members to download and you, you can add on to it use it however you like um you know it's, it'd be up to you so hopefully that's something that we can do but if you are interested in membership though we do have that available if you'd like to support the channel uh hopefully soon we'll be able to have full monetization settings on the youtube channel we just need to get up our watch time just a little bit um, but if you do want to support what we're doing here on Danny B Trains, you're more than welcome to do that. You don't have to. You're always welcome to stick around. Uh, but if you'd like to, that's an option as well. Just click the join button here on the channel. But uh, if, if anything else, just subscribing to the channel and giving us your support in that way is very much appreciated. But as for the build itself here, we're on the first leg of the neighborhoods and stuff here. We're working on some streets over here on this side. As you can, as I did say earlier, there seems to be a little bit more depth in this neighborhood on this side of the river so i'm establishing that right here by setting up some roads and some stop signs and finally there's starting to be some life come to come into play on this route now i did notice with the uh gravel road here it seemed like there was a gap so i used the embankment tool once again i don't know if you've ever thought to do this in train 22 but it served to be pretty nice to me in order to get this looking very nice. So you had a little bit of gravel and a gravel base underneath it. So, so the next time that you're on Train 22 and want to find a good way to do this, uh, give this method a shot. You might, you might appreciate it. coming in here as we put down those telephone lines that uh, connected in and and also I noticed this in the AI, AI image I don't know if you guys saw it too but it almost looked like some of those really tall power lines were stretching out through there so I added in some of those and that's going to come into play when we start getting into trees and vegetation in this area because if you know anything about those big tall power lines uh, they have to have massive cutouts in order for them to go through so that's going to be pretty interesting when we start getting into that aspect of it but uh, from this point, I think we've pretty much got all the roads established at this point. Now's the time where you start having fun. This is where Creative Liberties come into it. Get in there like this section here. 
get those gnarm rocks placed, get this area looking nice, and it's gonna come out really nice in the end. I gotta tell you, working on this river thing here has got me wanting to do some fishing. It, I, overall, I feel like I've done pretty good. I, I, I do spend a lot of time bass fishing, so I'm, I'm rather familiar with the way rivers and stuff usually look. So I feel like I've been able to do this river and the scenes around it pretty well in terms of the justice for it. Um, this scene here was pretty fun, getting to hide everything in with those rocks right here. Now on this hill here by the river, this is one of the few places where I did use the single shrub method. Um, as I learned moving on, it could be just a touch easier to use uh, to use the uh, spline assets moving forward. But for this here, we did still use the single shrub method that we used before, where we put those down first, then put down some more. And then we use these blinds and everything else in the trees, but uh, you know it still it still came out great on part one, and it came out great on this part as well. Um, but I'll let you guys kind of see as we continue to put the vegetation down, as this goes from being just a blank grass area to suddenly being full of trees, life, and everything else that this world needs in order to look like a real place. Now, this is something I want you guys to think about the next time you're building a, a route. This right here, the JVC trackside spline, is such a nice asset to have in your back pocket because it will allow you to get a good amount of weeds and stuff that do exist by actual train tracks. I get out and I, I do a lot of real rail fanning, and I recommend you do you do a lot of real rail fanning yourself because one, it's fun, but also it's going to teach you a lot about how the environments are around railroads that can make you a lot better when you get into trains in order to build your environment. So yes, I am utilizing these rocks here and they're great that, for what they are, for where you're gonna use them, but you're not always gonna have that. So that's where these right here, the trackside JVCs is so good because it adds in a whole other effort of things like with weeds and stuff like that that you're not always going to have uh in everything else so uh you know it, it saves you a lot of effort you don't have to go for and do individual weeds and plants and grass there because that asset right there does it all for you and in here you know i've done the uh i've already done the bushes and shrubs and stuff and this is where then now all these assets here are so good in order to really hide and blend in everything else those shrub assets especially take up so much volume and space that it really does a good job of hiding everything in there now yes you're going to use some grass blinds as well but using this does a great job to camouflage everything in there good and especially once you start putting out trees it's going to really hide everything good Oh. 
shoot him pool, crack a jack, take off now, don't look back, but hey, don't you want to play? Hold on, sugar, why you look so sad? Come on now, mama, ain't nothing here so bad. You got fast cars, movie stars, party on down the street. We're Mary Jane, good cocaine, plenty down there to be. Double down, throw some dice, take off now, don't think twice, but hey, don't you want to play? Once I was feeling pretty confident with the way all that was blended in, it was time to go through and put in the trees. Now, I'd, if you, you can notice in you can notice this from the AI image, there's a portion where it looks like there isn't tall trees in between where you see the locomotive at the front and going back a little way. So I did give it some gap and uh, had a had a good section where there was no tall trees, just the grass and bushes that you see going down the hill. Uh, but over on the other side, we had trees there and uh, really did a good job of just kind of connecting in everything right where it needs to go and blending it all in. Uh, I particularly like these maple trees. There's tree maple one, tree maple two, three maple three, and just kind of going through and getting them all kind of separated and moved around here. And we finally had, you know, that side of the hill pretty much done. There was nothing more to do there. So uh, from that point, well, this is where it starts to take a lot more effort on my part, a lot more uh, thinking, a lot more things to do, and it's time to create neighborhoods. We're using pretty much all the house assets I can find, I can use. Um, we will use a lot of approach medium houses, but mainly over on the other side of the river. Uh, but this is going to use quite a lot of houses and quite a lot of the development goes into this and quite a lot of thinking because that you also see another dirt road or gravel road that kind of goes uh, by the main highway. So that tells me, okay, you've got a main highway and you've got a road where people just live on. So I had to make that over there on that side of the river because that's what the AI image called for.
thing you'll see me doing here is creating these uh, driveways that go up the side of some of these houses. Uh, and likewise, I kind of notice also what appears to be a road that goes back on the back side uh, in the AI image. So here we go. We're creating that backside road right here and only bring it out about so far. Some of these driveways are going to connect to both sides of that road. Uh, I thought this was a neat idea for this area and it looks like that's a good way to kind of go off of what the AI had gave us. Now we're working on a few more details here. I decided this bridge needs to have a low clearance sign here, so we use the road sign low clearance there. Also, did you did you like the uh, the deer I had there looking at the picture of the deer crossing? I thought that was a nice little nice little Easter egg to hide in there. A few other road road signs going in where I feel like they could be necessary, and uh, got this area looking pretty darn nice. And here is the monotonous task that I put upon myself to give every house a mailbox. Maybe I didn't have to do this. Maybe I could have let it go. But houses need mailboxes. So I chose to not let it go. <laughs> These houses all got mailboxes. I'm going to continue to do this moving forward with all of the neighborhoods I make because darn it, you need a mailbox. So, sorry for the time this has taken to do this part. This house here was different. I gave it a white picket fence around it because it felt so much different than all the other houses in the area. And I felt like, okay, this is a house that was here long before this area really started getting um, a lot more people around it and decided, okay, this, is, this has got to be different. This has got to stand out. They've been here longer and they put a picket fence to separate themselves from the big housing development that moved in. A little bit more life here. There's no traffic that's going to flow on that road, so I put a uh, post office van. He's going through there making his deliveries. And uh, we're going to add in a few more details along this route, around along this part of the road here. So. Uh, you know, it, this is a part where the tracks are going to be going by this neighborhood. So you do want to have some kind of life that's visible if you happen to be looking out the window of your train. Put this barbed wire fence here in order to kind of break off this area a little bit. Um, and then we're going to really work on detailing this up a little bit, putting some things kind of back behind there. Uh, again, it's just something that although it's not necessarily seen by the AI just have a little bit of fun with it uh, and from this point it, it's really time to go in and start detailing up the vegetation in this part of the area
those uh, JVC wildflowers, I, I, had, I had a lot of fun with right there. I feel like they really did a good job of kind of help blending in the step out of tracks a little bit, along with those JVC track side assets. Um, and then from there, it's time to go ahead and start smoothing out this area and deciding, okay, what kind of life exists on this side of the road? On the side where the AI image we can't see, what exists out there? So for starters, well, we just got some trees. It's uh, right there by the, by the railroad bridge. Um, what's out in the middle of nowhere? Dollar Generals. If you see a Dollar General, you know probably you might be out in the middle of nowhere, especially around where I live. So this area first got a Dollar General. They got to have something out there on this side of the highway. Um, likewise, I wanted to have some kind of restaurant. I gave this them this old school KFC restaurant. I was really happy with the way that was. And likewise, probably need to have a gas station. So we got this TBS gas station BP. They're gonna have a BP right here. So you've got BP gas station, Dollar General, and KFC right there. Just a nice little bit of old school, small town business right there. <music> to break up the businesses from the road a little bit using some of those mulch assets a little bit there and uh, from that point it's time to go ahead and get this KFC built in pretty nice here and get the area around it made as well. some of the parking lines here we'll get some parking lots set up here for the businesses here the dollar general the kfc and uh i'm i'm pretty happy with the way this is looking it's, it's feeling very nice it's definitely feeling like a good area uh that's going to be able to have you know a good breakup of the visuals and show that this area has some life in it On the other side of the gas station, I did determine there needs to be something else there. So I started off with just this fence, uh, this fence gate here, and went to try to find the best chain link fence I could find and just make this boxed in, fenced in area here that's just gonna hold like a little op small office building, uh, some trucks, trailers, just, just something random here. It doesn't necessarily have to have a true purpose per se, but it's just something. Uh, someone also suggested I should maybe consider a power station right here. That's a possibility. I could go in and, and make some changes at some point. But uh, for now, this is what we have established right over here. I mean, we do have those big power lines, and, and it can be, you know, inferred. Maybe that's going off to a further power station later on. We don't know what the next part of the build has even, per se. Uh, so this, this, this area isn't necessarily done, uh, but for now, the businesses we have on this side is KFC, Dollar General, BP and some random business.
little bit of effort here in order to bring in those power lines and get them looking just a little bit nicer and then start detailing the areas of some grass and stuff like that along the way and uh, again remember what I said earlier those big power lines right here those big power lines well they don't they don't have trees that can go right alongside them because they've got to keep that area nice and cut here so we're utilizing some grass and we're working on just making some area where it's just grass bushes and things that aren't too tall in order to give those massive power lines plenty of space that they need. And we couldn't let that all be grass there, so we're putting down some asphalt here and really paving this area in good and kind of try to blend in some stuff there a little bit because I don't want to look too messy. Um, can also use some other things like some gravel back here in the back and kind of around that area. And then we take some more splines and start really blending it all in. And uh, I feel like it did a good job of hiding in everything right here to really make that area nice, it's full of life, and it looks like it just belongs. And we've got to get some grass there in that middle section that's between the road and those houses there now we are going to leave the, we're not going to do tall grass in those houses we are going to kind of leave that just this grass texture um, because well, these people take care of the grass they mow it so it's got to look uh, not shaggy everywhere but other places can look like there's some overgrowth and some longer grass though And we're utilizing these shrub tools here in order to really kind of hide and transition that area around those power lines pretty well and get this set up where we can finally do some tree work in this area um, again utilizing those you I utilize these in the grass to kind of like help kind of draw around those areas where those textures kind of meet together and it really does a good job of hiding all that in and uh, again, just, just filling in all those gaps, really, that's, that's about the best thing you can do with these uh, spline assets in the grass. Just hide it in. You don't want it to look like too much texture. You do want it to transition well. You do want it to feel natural here. placing on these trays here again you can see I'm really I'm really trying hard and paying attention to not get these trees where they will be in the way of those big power lines I you, you kind of want to work them around you definitely use them but don't let them get in the way of those big tall power lines remember they got to have a cutoff around them so, so got to really do a good job here and that's where it really paid 
to use those grass blinds in order to first define the area that's going around those power lines so that when you go into the trees afterwards you can do a good job of really hiding and blending in everything so that way when you start using your 2d trees because these, these are the nicer quality trees but you don't want to eat too much memory up using all these trees so just do them for the specific places that you need details to be seen and then you can use 2d trees later on This actually particular spot we're working on right here right now where we're doing all this tree work this is my longest recording this was the longest recording session that I had um, and for good reason a lot of detail went into this particular recording we set up that first side of the, uh, the town over on that side of the river we did a lot of tree work here a lot of detail and effort went in to this one right here and uh, I'm not shocked that this is the longest part of the recording it's broken up into uh, several recordings here. Looks like we've got about eight to nine different recording sessions that this took. Again, this took 19 combined hours to do all of this build here. Uh, and this right here especially is a very tiresome, monotonous task, but if you want to run trains at night at all, you do need some street lights. You can't be fully in the dark everywhere, so you do need some street lights. You do need a little bit of light going on here. Uh, so we did go through, we worked in those as well. Now, I used some people around that BP, um, but later on I'm going to find some more people, the RP assets, and those are going to really help me uh, go through and really do this better. I did all that work actually off camera. I take that back. I did the RP people work off camera, um, and here's a little Easter egg here. I put a Tennessee State Trooper, because we're just imagining this is in Tennessee. That's where I live. So we put a Tennessee State Trooper, and he's pulled over a UPS truck. Why? just because it's life those lights flash on the state trooper there and it's going to look pretty cool when you're going down the tracks and you say oh that guy got pulled over blow your horn at him do whatever you want to him uh again here this is a side where this this particular area is visible here so this is where i'm using a lot of different car assets and while a lot of these houses do have garages um, this right here is actually a school bus driver's house. They got their school bus there. Some people got semi trucks. They drive trucks for a living. Um, here we got some people moving into this house. U-Haul trucks there. Um, again, this is where you got to bring some life to it because you're good. The track, the train's gonna drive right by that neighborhood. There's another neighborhood that's gonna be over on the other side of the river. You don't have to see that side though. You don't. You won't see that side. You need houses and everything else to exist there. We don't need the cars to exist over there. But there needs to be some cars in the driveway because not everyone can put all their vehicles in the garage. So there is some on the driveways, and I was able to go through and utilize all this well. And I think at this point, that's pretty much it for that side of the river. And now it's time to go through and do a lot more housing work over on the other side of the river. This is the much bigger housing development project that's been over here. Uh, a lot more depth for this neighborhood. Way more houses. We're using pretty much every approach medium suburban house we can for this. Um, so just sit back and enjoy a lot of houses going up.
once again, all these houses, they get a mailbox. If I'm going to do anything detail related for an area where a train isn't going to go by, it's going to be that the houses do get mailboxes. You have to have a mailbox. And this didn't really appear in the AI image. So I took some creative liberty here because I felt like I need to break up all these houses. So I gave them all hedges and broke those up going in between each house because you need to have something there that's establishing the housing properties there. It's not, again, it's not visible in AI there, but again, this is not AI. Building the route, it's AI inspired. So uh, again, it gives me a little bit of creative freedom right there. And I mentioned this earlier, you're going to really see it come into play here. This is where I am using splines instead of individual vegetation assets. I use that spline there in order to define the area of the hills and vegetation and where it all meets. Because I do have more houses that are going down through this main road. And I want them to connect out to that road out there. But... Uh, I gotta, I gotta figure it out. So I use the, I use the uh, assets there in order to uh, define that area, bring our hedge back into play over here, and set up this next part of the housing right over here. So uh, again, just a little, just a little note there. I recommend JVC uh, trackside spline assets, anything you can use to your advantage uh, to make that just a little bit less effort on your part for the detailing the vegetation and then go through and start doing your driveways and mailboxes after that for these houses. Next up, go through and put down a lot of grass and then some shrubs after that and take care of this good hill over here. And that grass does a decent job of getting it all hit in, but these shrubs really is what makes a difference here. Using those shrubs really helps camouflage in that area and makes this look more natural. I'm actually going through and laying down JVC fence grass 
because I actually am going to put down a barbed wire fence on this side in order to kind of keep a little bit of a defined area here away from the river. So uh, again, in case you was wondering why the heck am I taking so much effort to put in more grass right here, it's because it's JVC fence grass that I wanted to be kind of there at the bottom of the grass and at the bottom of the fence, I, I should say. And that connects over to the hedge where this big neighborhood develops. Now, for starters in this neighborhood, I had one depth of road, but I started looking at the image some more and I determined, hey, this actually looks like it goes off to another road. Um, and I actually brought it in over here. And, but it also looks like that road leads off into a dead end or at least something that we don't know what's there. So uh, I did go ahead and use a dead end. Now we're gonna get a little creative with that later on. You'll see uh, when we get there to it but uh, that dead end is gonna actually have a purpose in the end that we're going to establish. So it, there is a sign that says dead end, but it goes somewhere. It's just perhaps something that people can, can't or shouldn't be going to. Uh, we have a lot of no trespassing and do not enter signs right here. And then I'm going to put a gate in here. It again says do not enter. There is something up there that we don't need to know about. We don't need to worry about that. Don't go in there. Do not go in there. So anyways, Back to these houses here. These are the people who live here. They know they shouldn't go in there. They just live in their house. These houses here were interesting and I felt like, okay, their porch is actually over on the other road but they're gonna have their driveway and garage still on that main road. So that's where their mailbox is gonna go. Their mailbox is still gonna be addressed to that main road right there, but they have porches that go over to the other side. Some of these areas were interesting here, like I had to turn these houses kind of facing the other way and just kind of put them out on those uh, connecting roads there. Uh, but in the end, I, I feel like it actually made pretty pretty well sense, especially once you get all these houses in and all the driveways uh, put together and the hedges connected. This is personally my favorite suburb I've probably ever made on trains, the way it turned out in the end. I'm pretty happy with the final product on this. So. Uh, again, I'll be quiet for a little bit longer. <laughs> I know this is taking so long, so again, I appreciate you all sticking through the effort, but uh, this is what it takes to make an AI accurate image. You've really got to pay attention to the details that AI has created for me here. Thinking of all these hedges here replacing. Anyone ever seen the movie Over the Hedge? That was always a good movie back in the day. I enjoyed that one when I was a kid. Some of y'all might be too young to even know what that movie is. I don't know. If you've never seen it, go check it out. I think DreamWorks made that one. Um, but anyways, these hedges do a good job of really defining this area and everyone's personal property here. So uh, I like using them. I recommend you use them if you're going to be working on big suburbs like this. Gosh, anyway, just imagine this neighborhood must have a heck of an HOA or something like that because, uh, golly, to have to go through and make sure everyone's hedges are looking nice and trimmed and shaped up and not getting too overgrown. Man, these people do a good job, don't they? <laughs> oh, this is just the bored thoughts of Danny B when we're this long into a recording. I can't believe this is an hour and 
10 minutes into this recording that I'm doing for the commentary on this. Again, I can't speak for all this time. I'm glad I have music. Um, I do pay a license actually for Epidemic Music for the music you guys hear in these videos. Um, so again, if you want to support the channel, I think it's $3.99 a month. Join and become a member today. Helps a little bit go towards that fee I pay each month to have good music. So again, hopefully one day we're getting the ad revenue too. Hopefully it'll be here very soon. But uh, if you are enjoying this, make sure you, again, leave a like on this video. Subscribe. And uh, yeah, continue to enjoy the videos. Edges are done now it's time for the driveways which takes a little bit of time too because you gotta some of these houses have single car garages so you have to use a different uh different driveway asset the ones with big garages i've been using these uh driveway two car garages that are actually longer or sorry they're wider than the garage but i also noticed they kind of lead up to the door so i kind of like how they do that and uh this has been my preferred driveway to use when i've been making all these houses here Every house gets a mailbox, so hang on. This is going to take a good amount of time. We've got, I've lost track of how many houses are actually in this particular neighborhood. This is definitely the biggest neighborhood, so a lot, a lot of mailbox work to go here right here. So enjoy placing mailboxes. y'all might be asking how do i stay sane when actually going through and doing this i have been binge watching a ton of danny Harmon distance signals videos while making these especially at night time i did a lot of this work at night um danny Harmon, obviously y'all probably know him makes some fantastic rail fitting videos it's kind of what i strive for my personal rail fitting videos to be like um those just aren't hitting the algorithm as good I don't know why. I wish they would go out more. I'm, I'm putting out some good stuff, I think, uh, from my rail fan catches. So if you do like real life rail fanning, remember we don't just play trains here. We do also check out real trains here. Um, if you want to do good work in Train 22, I recommend you get out and really pay attention while rail fanning. It can make you a better builder when you get into Train 22. <music> One thing I did, I did it over on the other side too. These little side streets here are actually getting some street names. They don't have to necessarily be anything in particular. They just need to be different from one another. That's all I cared about really. Um, but they do get street names here so that, you know, it's, everything has a purpose here. It actually has a little, like you live on this road, you live on this avenue. So, uh, but was able to link them all up I and mean, every road, it, each road sign is going to the corresponding road for the, the same way. So. 
uh, I was able to do that and at that point this area is pretty much done uh, it does need the uh, lights to go in so I put the street lights there and then after that I did put in the power lines as well because well you can't just have a neighborhood of no power so you do have to have those power lines As long as this part has been taking me to do all of this, I can't imagine had I chosen some of the examples that AI gave me that I did not choose to go with. This I felt like was the easier option, but this one has took me so much time. This is nearly a two hour long video as it is with everything sped up by 1200. I mean, I can't imagine if I had tried to do anything more than this. Uh, it's really going to be interesting to see how this series progresses. I may try, keyword is try, to get AI to give me a closer perspective for the next episode so that maybe we're not working on such a massive project like we have in this episode. But with that being said, you all let me know down in the comment section, what are some prompts, some future prompts that you guys want to see? I'll ask again later on just as a reminder, but what to be thinking about it. What are some AI prompts that you guys would like to see in order to help keep building this area. Well anyways, I'm pretty much done with that neighborhood now and it's time to add in more life. We can't just have a KFC, Dollar General, and BP be the only things here. So we are going to go back down to that other side by the main road and put in some more business here. We've got a Speedway, we've got a Waffle House, and then I was trying to find a Hardee's and I couldn't find it for some reason. I do know there's a Hardee's exist. Uh, funny, here's a model train show coming up. Anyone want to go to the model train show? Um, I was thinking about putting in a, a, a sign there for what city this is, but I couldn't quite find what I was looking for. Started exploring some other assets here, uh, but decided, you know, let's not, let's not overcomplicate it. Let's not think about it too much here. Um, let's put in some more work here. Got a Speedway. Got a Waffle House. Now I found this little antique shop. Okay, sure, it's a small town. Let's put an antique shop right by the Waffle House. That works for me. Ooh, what the heck is this? It's a big building. Could this be like a factory? Uh, no, oh, it's actually a school. So I found a sign for Hillside High School. Now, again, look at what's back behind us and look at the environment this is. Very mountainous, very hilly. So Hillside High School, that worked perfectly. Put in a Kroger grocery store. Gotta have a decent-sized grocery store. Can't just go to Dollar General for everything. So put in a Kroger. Got a little pizza restaurant here. And uh, we've got a high school. We've got good amount of business right in that corner. Now, when you go over that train bridge, you can barely see it off the distance. If you go out outside of the train, you're going to be able to see a little bit more. So that's why I want to have just a little bit more life over there. It has helped lead to this nice area here. Putting in some speed limit signs before we get into more detail work of the buildings here. We establish what buildings we want, and it's time to put in the details now. this point and I promise you we are getting close to the end here I guarantee we're getting close to the end here but at this point when I was in the build I just remember thinking thank God I am putting trees down on this side here because that's telling me I am almost done I was so ready to be done with this project this has been taking a long time and I was so grateful to finally be getting done with this uh, putting down all those trees there making them look nice making them blend in it was just such a great feeling to know, hey, this one is almost done. We only had about a little bit more time left and this project could finally be done. There is a lot more detailing still to be done, 
Uh, but I knew by the time I was putting down trees here, I'm thinking, man, this is really starting to get there. We're almost done with this. it's finally time to put the pavement down over here around the school around the businesses around the school blend it in do all kinds of different effects here do a little bit and gonna have to really really think we can't just have all blank parking here so uh, gonna have to utilize some different assets here to break up these businesses do the parking do the sidewalks do everything we'll make it look nice uh, but in the end I'm really happy with the final product on this. So I'll let y'all see how we came uh, to make this town come to be with all the details that it has. As we continue to lay down parking here, uh, just a little bit of side conversation. Something that's helped me keep sane for all this and throughout the building process uh, is listening to music. I go through and I listen to a lot of uh, good playlists. Recently, I went and saw the movie Deadpool and Wolverine. I hope you guys saw it. It's a great movie. Loved it. Don't want to give any spoilers, but had great music, particularly uh, one Madonna song. It's just, if you've seen it, you know what scene it's in. Uh, I've been listening to that quite a bit uh, throughout this and sometimes just have to have music on repeat sometimes you find those uh, YouTube videos that's like song for 10 hours that's one of the songs that can really help you when you just need a lot of inspiration to get through of a build um, I like listening to music while I'm building on trains so uh, if you ever need something to keep you occupied while you're building for long periods of time like this just listen to some music or turn on a podcast or do something like that So this was the final business that I placed down here. So all in all, this side of the river has a hillside high school, a subway, a speedway gas station, a waffle house, an antique store, a pizza shop, and a Kroger. So all in all, this place has got quite a good amount of business here. And it's certainly proving that, hey, since we had so many houses that were down the road on that side of the river, well, they obviously need something in their life. They need they need a town. So, I mean, although, yeah, you couldn't see this in AI, you have to be a little creative with it. Um, I was pretty happy with this. That many houses down there, there's got to be a school. So, here we go. We've got a school established here and uh, just a nice little town. I don't know what this town's called. Don't know if we necessarily have to have a name for it. But we know this is Hillside High School because it's by the hillside. I will tell you this, doing parking for a school uh, is not easy. And I know that I did not do near enough parking for this school than what it would actually have. But at the same time, 
Um, we're working with what we got. We, we can, you know, we're working with what we have, what we can see. You don't need to overcomplicate it too much. I probably, I probably did overcomplicate it too much. If I'm being honest, what am I talking about? But um, you know, do as much as you feel suited to do. So I, I put in all the parking that I wanted to here. Um, even established the bus lanes of where the bus has got to go to get uh, through and in and out of the school here. Um, but I'm pretty happy. I, I, I really, really enjoyed the way the final product come out in this town. Um, and I put in a few trees. So let me just grab a huge oak tree there. There's a decent size oak tree there to put those in those areas there. And uh, at that point, kind of established some more things like putting in some more mulch to break things up. Uh, in this little town here move some signs around make it look nice and again this area is pretty much almost done we'll have to kind of hide it a little bit use some grass blinds use some trees hide in blend in this area to the woods that's going to be back behind it uh, and then after we get done with this town it's time to finally and i'm happy to say this finally do the rest of the mountain work so overall there's our little uh, town we've kind of come up with here needs a little bit more and then we should be about done with it Got to get those lights in there. Got to get these parking lots, especially at the school. Um, kids could be coming in early in the morning, could have after school events, could have basketball games. I don't necessarily have a football field for this school, so we're just going to say that they only have like a basketball team there. Um, Got to get lights all around the school because, you know, you, you don't want you want you want this place to be lit up nice. It's a big school, so we'll be able to see all around all parts of it. Um, but then after that, like, again we're just about done there's not much more details that i haven't done yet for this little area it needs some more lights it needs uh power lines other than that though i think those are the final steps in order to get this town what i would say is good enough to be completed And here we go. We have finished up the town and it's finally time to get these mountains going. This was the point where it really sunk in of how close to being done with episode two I really was. To finally be making that final leg of the mountain was a huge win to me because it meant I am done with the individual detail works. All that has been done. We can finally put this mountain in and make this place look exactly the way it needs to look. I didn't necessarily have a true strategy to making these mountains like I probably did in episode one. So I just really just kind of spammed the raise height tool there and then eventually blended it all in. Every now and again would do some of those like 
you know, longer hill valley things, whatever you want to call them. Um, sometimes it's about, with all this grain, it about looks like it's the back of uh, Apocalypse from The Incredible Hulk. Any of y'all ever seen that one? Uh, but yeah, so they're very jagged, very spiky, uh, but you can use a smooth tool to really get that in good. easiest part here make a little space there with those 2d trees copy and get ready to paste them into the mountains because once you've once you've done all the outer edges that are more visible then you can go in at these and really kind of just move them around and use those as your background trees i love the 3d trees but they're only really should be used around the areas where you're going to look at the background can be exactly that background trees um, so I put those in and filled in all those voids there and which really again told me hey this this is done all right when you get done with this 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 is this project is done still gonna do the mountains on the other side but this huge mountain right here it's done you know when you're at this step that's telling you hey good job you've completed it you know, you, you've held in to the end. You have gotten done with that project. And now you see from this side how good that really looks. So, a little motivation there. Get free of one mountain and go do the other one. You've already done one. You can easily do this one now. The beauty of this side here is I've actually already done all the 3d tree work here so really i just got to create the mountain and put trees on it and i'm i'm fully done so look at that we've already we're working on the mountain here now we are almost done with this i can't believe it it's what a what a ride what a journey this has been to get to the end on part two here definitely took a lot more time because the ai called for a lot more detail on this one compared to what we first started with the first one just literally the biggest thing you saw was a river and a dirt road that's all you saw and trees so this one had a lot more life to do. Had mountains, had communities, had a river, had two roads with you know communities on both sides, and had mountain peaks and then woods. Again, it, it seems simple enough. It really does, and it is simple. 
but it takes a lot of time to get those details accurate and get them where they need to go and you do have to imagine what else is back there out of sight a few things to think about next time you're building a route don't just think about what you see in front of you think about what else could possibly be there as we continue to move out this mountain we're just about ready to put down those trees and we will be done here Back over here in this first mount here, we had to cut off for the power lines. Again, it's so nice that I went ahead and outlined out those good 3D trees because it really helped that power line cut be really nice here. Uh, go through the 2D trees, continue to outline the outer edges, and bada bing, bada boom, folks, we are in the final stretch of this. This route is almost done, or at least this part two of the route is almost done. AI told me to make this. I have made it to the best of my ability and it is done. Take a look at that. How does it look compared to the picture? I think it'll come out looking very nice here. Now we've worked really hard to get this built. We can finally sit back and enjoy some cinematics as we take a look at the finished product. Here is the little town next to Hillside High School. Nice drone footage here as we go across. Soon there will be a train coming through. It looks really nice. Thanks y'all so much for sticking around and checking out this video. Leave a like on it if you appreciate it. Again, if you want to support the channel, we do have memberships now available. $3.99 a month to become a supporter of the channel. And until next time, let me know down in the comments section, what would you like to see next? What prompts would you like to see Bing AI give me to make on part three of this series of having AI help me build a new route in Trains 22. And should we start on the continuation path or should we go back to the other side of part one? Let me know down below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.